All right, September 2017. This is going to be the medal that I promised. Uh, <laughs> whoever's watching. Uh, and we're just going to start. Um, all these records I bought, again, September 2017. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it's interesting that I just uh, went on vacation to back to Michigan again. Bought tons of records. Uh, so... <laughs> September 2022, if and when we ever get there, it's going to have a lot of records. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is, I bought some of these records in Michigan, actually. And uh, yeah, a few, a few of these are still uh, from my Michigan trip in 2017. Um, first record uh, is, I'm going to go in order of uh, year they were released. Uh, first record is Black Sabbath, Paranoid. This is a uh, NEMS release, uh, so European Press. Uh, my copy isn't that great. It's a little uh, noisy. Um, and it actually has a sticker on it. Uh, made in Holland. Uh, and yeah, this is their uh which album is this their second album came out in september uh 1970 uh or actually june june 1970 um yeah this is an excellent album uh almost every song on here is good uh war pigs paranoid planet caravan is really good that's probably i'm not sure which song i'm gonna put on there uh on the playlist uh Planet Caravan, maybe, uh, Electric Funeral, Hand of Doom, Fairs or Boots, always like that song. Uh, I like the live version on Speak of the Devil as well. Uh, Brad Gillis does a great job with that. But yeah, Black Sabbath Paranoid, I'm sure everybody, you know, most metalheads have this in their collection already. Probably have a better copy than me. Uh, like I said, I, I think I need a, uh, a replacement copy. Or a new, you know, a new used copy. Because, uh, yeah, that one's, it's pretty noisy. Uh, it's probably, a, you know, no skips, but it's probably VG. Uh, next album is, uh, came out February 25th, 1973. The year I was born, but not the date yet. Uh, I was born in November. Uh, this is Alice Cooper, Billion Dollar Babies. This album is fantastic. Um, I have all the stuff. Uh, this was punched out, uh, but still all the cards are in there. I think the person punched it out just so they could see the inner sleeve. Uh, I still got the billion dollar bill. Uh, so this one has all the stuff with it. Um, but again, this copy as well, I probably need a new one. Um, it's a little bit noisy, but it's one of Alice Cooper's best albums, I think, uh, you know, Killer is probably still my favorite. Um, this might be my third favorite album uh, next to the first, uh, or not the first, but uh, Love It to Death is probably my first favorite, or my second favorite, Killer, then probably Billion Dollar Babies. The, these, those three albums are, you know, the apex of Alice Cooper. I mean, I believe he was touring stadiums and stuff by not, by this time, and, you know, it was just, they were just one of the biggest bands in the world, really. Uh, and yeah, this is an early press on the green Warner Brother label. Um, but yeah, my copy is a little beat up. Uh, still well-loved and plays, again, no skips, but it is a bit noisy. All right, this band, uh, this album came out October 27, 1975. It's the first album from band called Angel and this band was discovered by Gene Simmons in a club these guys are famous for wearing like all white satin suits or I guess jumpsuits <laughs> in their live show that was kind of like their gimmick uh and they're kind of like a hard rock prog kind of band um there's some stuff on here that sounds uh you know, like Led Zeppelin a little bit, you know, but with keyboards, which sounds interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's progressive. It's a little bit glam. 
it's hard rock. It's kind of a, a lot of different things. Um, and there's a song in here called The Tower, which is the first song on the album. That song is amazing. Uh, Greg Giuf Giuffria, I don't know how to say his name. Uh, Giuffria, whatever. Uh, his keyboards on this are just nuts. I mean, they're just all over the place. You know, he has the craziest solos. I just call it like keyboard wankery. I mean, it's nuts. It's, it's you know, this guy took yes and added, you know, went to 11 with it. <laughs> and the tower, especially like the very beginning of the tower has this crazy keyboard intro. It's bizarre. It's really good though. It just gets you right in the mood for the song. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's just a really good hard rock band. Um, yeah, Angel, the guitar player, Punky Meadows, he used to be in, um, a band called Cherry People, which is like a power pop band. I believe they were the early seventies or mid seventies, something like that. Um, I don't know exactly when they came out, but yeah, it's on a early Casablanca release, uh, um, pressing um yeah really really great album um almost all the songs on here are, actually all of them are good a uh, long time is good rock and roller is good mariner is really good that's kind of a cool song they have a theme i mean i think on every album they have a song about pirates or something it's real interesting um i'm gonna kind of just keep going with angel because i have a bunch i bought a bunch of albums i was listening to shabby road record show at the time that i bought all these records so i was getting a lot of like i said from the from the last you know when i did the hard rock one um video for september um you know they had a ton of bands that i uh learned about and angel was one of them uh this is a hell of a band from angel uh, this album came out June 5th, 1976. Uh, there you can kind of see them in their white satin suits. I'll give you a real nice close up. <laughs> they look amazing. Look at this hair. I mean, these two, this guy, this is Greg and this guy, Punky. I think that's Punky. Yeah, it's Punky Meadows. Those guys, I think that's Punky Meadows. Yeah. Their feathered hair, like when I was younger, when I had long hair, my hair would feather like that. I loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> These guys are amazing. Um, yeah, this album is pretty much similar to the uh, self-titled first album. Uh, it's more more rock and roll, you know, a little bit less progressive. Um, but I think they have. I think the song "Mirrors" is the. I want to say that's the one, or maybe The Fortune. Either The Fortune or Mirrors is the pirate song out of here. Um, <laughs> so they, they just, I don't know. They're just funny, I guess. Uh, the son of Casablanca as well. Yeah, Gene Simmons discovered these guys and was just, I guess, blown away. These guys never really made it either. I mean, they ended up being in a movie called Foxes or something like that with, uh, I think it was called Foxes with... Uh, um, Oh, what's her name from uh, Taxi Driver? Real young kid actor. I always when I do these videos, I forget. So if I do remember, I'll put a little subtitle on there. Uh, I forget her name right now. I have her. Put, I see her in my head. Uh, but yeah, Angel. Uh, this is hell of a band. Both of those Angel albums are are really excellent. I highly recommend them, um, especially if you want something that has keyboards. <laughs> But isn't, yes, you know, isn't too progressive, more rock and roll. Kind of like, you know, Journey a little bit in there. You know, they, they would kind of fit in with that. Uh, but 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 heavier. Uh, I, I would put these guys in metal, uh, you know, in the same way. Maybe glam metal and metal, glam metal, hard rock. But, you know, they're, they're close enough, I think. Um, and this album came out, the next album from Angel... I don't know if this is the next album. It might be, but June 15th, 1977. Yeah, it's the third album. Third album from Angel. Uh, this is Heaven on Earth. Um, or On Earth as it is in Heaven. And they figured out on their logo that they could turn it upside down and it would read the same thing. So they kind of made it, you know, to where uh, it can be read both ways. <laughs> it's such a gimmick. Such a... I mean, it's cool, right? 
it's weird, but it's cool. Um, yeah, so yeah, this album is also good. Uh, Telephone Exchange is good. Again, they're like, the, the songs are getting more simple, you know, more just hard rock. Uh, they're moving away from the prog uh, and they're just trying to make, you know, catchy songs, really pop pop rock even, you know, uh, kind of like Journey-esque, but, but they still were a little bit heavy. Um, and yeah, I don't know if there is a, maybe Cast the First Stone might be a pirate song. <laughs> I can't remember. Cast the First Stone is actually a good song. I remember when I was listening to it, I, I liked that song. Uh, so I might put that one on the playlist, but pick up those first three angel records if if you like especially if you like the first one uh i think that you'll just keep liking them um they're all pretty good um this one came out february in 1980 this is their sixth studio album so there was three more albums or no two more albums in between uh before they did the live record and i believe they did this live during the filming of that movie foxes i think it was called and uh yeah this is a pretty good live record i mean you really <laughs> like the white sat look at these guys they like pulled it up there a while that's pretty hilarious like that was their gimmick like look at this he had a pirate shirt you know so maybe that's why they did the pirate theme uh on some of their songs um really good stuff man uh yeah, these guys were great. Oh, he has a guitar. Look at that. That's amazing. Yeah, Greg. Greg. He, he ended up having his own band, uh, with which was his last name is the name of the band. I never... I see that record all the time. At least the first one. It's a black cover with just his name on it. I've never bought it. I've never listened to it. But the more I listen to Angel, like I was listening to him, you know, before making the video. And yeah, I really, really... I'm curious how much wankery he has going on in there because, I mean, the guy is just bonkers on the keyboards. I mean, the stuff he comes up with. And he was just using all of the settings, <laughs> like all of the settings. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to hear some interesting keyboard sounds. Uh, and, yeah, mine was a cutout, so never sold. And, I mean, well, somebody bought it in the cutout bin. Uh, and then, yeah, I ended up buying it. Uh, yeah, there's just the Casablanca inserts for this one. Um, yeah, it's a good record. It has, I think this might be their, it wasn't their last record, but it might have been their last record because they didn't, I don't know if they had another studio album after this until much later. Uh, or maybe they had one more studio album. I'd have to double check. But, uh, this goes all the way up to, I think, White Hot was the, the album. Um, and they open with the tower, uh, telephone exchange is on here. Uh, I ain't going to eat out my heart anymore was, a, was, I guess their biggest hit single. Um, and it wasn't, it must've been on, it was on an album subsequent to the two, I, the three I just showed. Um, how they do all the young dudes. So they're, they're showing their, you know, ins inspiration from the glam metal of the seventies, uh, which is. Yeah, it, 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 it they definitely have that feeling, but with keyboards, lots of keyboards. <laughs> Greg loves his keyboards. Uh, all right. Then uh, this album came out November 10th, 1981. It's the first studio album. And this is not the original, original, original press, uh, but this is Motley Crue, Too Fast for Love. This was my first favorite band. Uh, you know, and I had this album and the first album I ever, the first cassette I ever bought with my own money was Shot at the Devil. Uh, yeah, so Motley Crue was my first favorite band ever. And this record still holds up today. Uh, it, you know, mixed metal, punk, glam, kind of mixed it all together in, in this really heavy sound. Um, and yeah, this record changed changed the LA music scene for sure. Uh, and, you know, it was one of the first records, besides Quiet Riot and Twisted Sister, uh, one of the first records that 
well, well, it was, I think this hit before Twisted Sister 82, uh, or right around there. I can't remember when Stay Hungry, like, hit, but Quiet Riot was definitely before this, but, uh, these guys, man, their heaviness, and these guys weren't really played on the radio, but they became popular as hell, and they just, you know, kind of, after, after Shout of the Devil came out, they were just on the move, uh, you know, I think they were opening for Ozzy, which, you know, a lot of bands started, like Metallica opened for Ozzy, Motley Crue opened for Ozzy, like, Ozzy broke a lot of bands, <laughs> you know, that just became gigantic later, uh, and the tour that they just did, you know, Vince actually sounded good in some of the videos I saw, he didn't sound too bad, uh, he's actually singing all of the lyrics, or at least trying to, uh, you know, guy's old now, so, you know, all these older guys, you know, they can't, you know, they can't keep their, their voices on what it used to be, but, uh, I think they did, I think they did a respectable job, I guess, better than when I saw them on their, uh, you know, their supposed last tour, um, yeah, he was only singing, like, the first two or three words of every, you know, lyric, it was, it was really bad, uh, but this is, this pressing that I have, um, is a, it's a Columbia House pressing, actually, so manufactured Columbia House, yeah, so I actually like getting some of the, I actually like getting these Columbia House ones when I find them, I don't, I haven't ever noticed a sound difference or anything like that, I mean, maybe somebody who has, like, a more higher-end system than me might notice a difference, uh, you know, the better your system, the more, the more you're going to hear, so, you know, it might be better just to stick with the medium system uh, if you're going to buy Columbia House uh, or club pressings. But, yeah, I haven't uh, noticed a, an issue with this pressing. Of course, it's the Remix, the Electra Remix, uh, so that's the only difference. I've never, I don't think I've ever actually heard or listened to the uh, Leather Remix, you know, the original mix. Uh I'd probably want the record if I heard it. So that's probably why, you know, I I don't want to pay the money to get, you know, one of those three, I think it was repressed three times with that mix uh, on the original leather records. But anyway, this record's fantastic. Every song is amazing. Nikki Six is a great songwriter, um, at least for glam metal, for sure. Um, all right. Hard to believe this album, March 27th, 84. Ninth studio album from the Scorpions. I had this one on cassette when I was a kid with this cover. Uh, I love this cover. This cover is very, very awesome. Uh, and there's also another cover where it's just the band. Uh, it's the insert cover. So if you have this cover... Uh, you know, I guess it got censored or, you know, they might have wanted to sell it at more stores uh, than we're selling it. I mean, this record sold trillions of copies. It's probably uh, multi-platinum. This album is fantastic. I used to play this album with, on my on my cassette player, taped it to my bike, just <laughs> riding around the neighborhood. Uh, I love this record. Uh, love It First Thing by The Scorpions is fantastic. Every song's a hit. Still Loving You is amazing. Uh, of course, Rocky Like a Hurricane is kind of over, but everything else on here, I can still play and not be bored. Uh, fantastic record. Uh, my copy is not, yeah, it's just a regular. Oh no, my, <laughs> this is a club press. This is a RCA uh, club press. <laughs> so two in a row uh but it has the uh the uh thicker cardboard uh sleeve um so they didn't cheap out uh and it's on the black mercury labels um excellent album uh nothing really like i mean there probably is something interesting about it but i didn't read too much about these albums but you know, before doing this, I know a little bit about each one, but yeah, excellent record, no flaws. All right, next record is, came out July 84, so same year, a couple months after 
uh, Scorpions record. This is the sixth studio album from Lion T. Or was it Young and I forget. Uh, yeah, this is uh, In Rock We Trust. This has the song um, Don't Stop Running on it. Don't Stop Running was on the uh, White Hot uh, K-Tel compilation cassette that I had when I was a kid. So I really loved that song. Uh, I knew that song before I knew Y&T, before I really knew, you know, music besides, you know, what I'd heard on the radio up to that point. I never owned any music that I could listen to on demand over and over again uh, when I, until, you know, I received that cassette and a, a cassette, another KTEL, a bunch of 60s bands on it, double cassette. Um, but yeah, White Hot had Don't Stop Running and... These guys are great. I mean, Y&T is a fantastic band. Um, they got a little bit big. They never became huge. This was uh, produced by Tom Ollum, which is, uh, he produced uh, all the Judas Priest albums um, or, or most of the early Judas Priest albums. Um, yes, came out in 1984. Um, fantastic record. Uh, there's actually a song on here when I was listening to this sound, it sounds a lot like Great White. So I'm I'm wondering, like the Great White album, um, I think it's coming up here. Yeah, Once Bitten. I don't know if they listened to this record. I, they must have listened to this record because there's a song on here that sounds a lot like Save All Your Love. Kind of has the same guitar, uh, you know, intro kind of thing. Uh, it's a little bit heavier on this. It's not, a, it's not, but, but it has, it kind of does the build up, you know, where it does get heavy. Uh, you know, starts off slow, but gets heavy. This is a great record. I haven't been disappointed by a Y&T record, especially uh, at least any of the early ones. Um, they're all really good. Now, this record came out June 13th, 1985. Second studio album from Rat. Invasion of Your Privacy. This album is perfect. Five out of five, 10 out of 10 whatever you want to say, uh, just has a regular inner sleeve. Again, this cover is awesome as well. I really like, really enjoyed this cover when I was a kid. I thought it was great, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, you're in love, never use love, lay it down. One of the best guitar riffs, you know, one of the best guitar riff intros, to us to especially a glam metal you know song uh it might be one of the best of the era the entire era uh lay it down just that riff the chorus it's it was never overplayed either not like round and round was you know they still play round and round but they don't they don't play lay it down enough i think they should just well maybe it's better because you know it, i won't get sick of it but i don't listen to the radio anyway anymore um, yeah, every song on here is good. Uh, perfect album, Invasion of Your Privacy by Rat. Uh, this is on Atlantic, the green and red labels. Um, perfect record. I had this when I was a kid as well on cassette. Loved it. Loved it. I was all in on this stuff, man. I was... You know, watching Headbangers Ball, buying almost everything I saw, you know, well, every, you know, everything I could afford when I was a kid. I could only buy like one record every one or two weeks with my allowance. Um, but yeah, I definitely owned Rat. And when I found that you could buy used cassettes, oh man, that like doubled my collection because I was able to buy, you know, two for two, at least two cassettes for the price of one new one. All right, uh, this record I got for three bucks, and it's a great record. It's Fiona. This the, the cover on this looks so silly. This is kind of a heavier record, though. It's it's uh, you know it's Bon Jovi esque. You know it's kind of that type of pop rock, pop metal. Um, you know, but but these songs are actually really good on here, especially uh, "Hang Your Heart on Me." That is a really good song. Um, I really like Fiona. I like her second record too. Uh, not as much. I actually like this one better. Uh, the The second record has Winger does a duet with her, 
Kip Winger does. And it's all right. This record, though, I listened to it again. It's solid. I mean, I think it's good. Uh, it's it's not incredibly heavy, but like I said, if you like Bon Jovi, if you like that kind of stuff, keyboards, a little bit heavy, melodic choruses, I, I file it under glam metal because uh, I think it kind of fits, you know, in the femme fatale, the vixen, you know, that type of, of uh, vixen's a little bit heavier. Uh, but it all fits in there. The, and, and these songs are pretty good. They're pretty good songs. You know, it's not a perfect record. It's not, you know, like top 10 or anything like that. It's not up there with, you know, invasion or privacy, but it's, a, it's, you know, if you see this, you might be like, oh God, this is silly or some silly pop record, but it's not. It's kind of a rocking record. Uh, I would check it out, uh, especially if you like the Hang Your Heart On Me song that I'm going to put. I'll put that one on the playlist because it's a good song. All right, the next record, uh, this record, this album cover is amazing. May 23rd, 1986, an album that could, right? <laughs> the little album that could. This is Poison. Look what the cat dragged in. This band should have never have been popular or famous, especially the musicianship on here, the songwriting kind of, the look, I mean, everything is excessive. <laughs> and the guy who produced this record, either the, either the producer, uh, Rick Bode, or uh, the mixer, uh, which is Michael Wagner, they had an opportunity, one of those guys had an opportunity to get a point on this record, which means that they would have gotten a, a, a little bit of money every, for every album that sold. Or they had the opportunity to get paid, you know, straight up, you know, cash out uh, for the job they did, you know, for mixing or, or producing the record. The guy thought, he's like, dude, this record sucks. It, it's terrible. The musicianship is terrible. The songs suck. I'll take the 50 grand. Uh, that's all I need. If he had taken a point on this record, he'd, he would have made millions of dollars. Nobody, nobody could have predicted that this record this record would be the one that would be, you know, up there with the with Bon Jovi, Slippy Room Wet. I remember when those these two albums were like, those two albums were just like, uh, you know, Talk Dirty to Me and Living on a Prayer were just like, you know, played on the radio constantly, uh, you know, around this time. Um, yeah, I think, when did that album come out? Yeah, yeah, they both came out in 86. I remember here and talk dirty to me for the first time, you know, a friend of mine in junior high, uh, had the cassette and thought it was amazing. It was just, it was a really good song. And this was before I was watching stuff on MTV. I don't think I, I don't think, I can't remember if I was watching Headbangers Ball around this time or not. And yeah, this album is just, like I said, the musicianship is not great. The songs are, I mean, they're poppy and they got hooks and they're fantastic now. But at the time, you know, like musicians, this is not a musician's album at all. This is like, <laughs> this album was a joke at the time. Nobody, they were, th these guys were playing shows in, I guess, in Pennsylvania or whatever. They sucked live. Like people would go see them and they'd be like, these guys are terrible, but like 90% of the audience was women and they were just going nuts for these guys. They loved them. And it was just, this is just a record that is right time, you know, right place, right time. And it is a good record. You know, when you listen to it now, the songs are good. Cry Tough is good. I Want Action is good. I Won't Forget You is good. Look What the Cat Dragged In is good. Talk to you to me, another riff that's just amazing. Uh, want Some, Need Some. I mean, Want Some, Need Some. And those are all just the singles. Uh, you know, all the really good songs. Uh, yeah, insane how this album just exploded and went nuts. And it holds up. I mean, it's good. This is the uh, remixed version uh, on Capitol. Uh, you know, so this is a later, it's still an original press, but it's it's not a, an early press. Um, you know, it's not one of the first... Uh, before it was, I think it was, I think it was released independent before Capital picked it up. So.
So, yeah, it was an indie record, you know. <laughs> like, you know, if you if you grew up in the 90s, you know, indie doesn't mean the same thing. Or, you know, I guess they have, they're still indie records. You know, there's indie metal records, but, you know, this was an indie record, an independent record at, at one point. Good record. Who knew it was going to explode the way it did? Uh, I'm just going to show the next Poison record because I do have both of these records. Uh, this one came out May of 88. And this is, uh, I have the censored cover for Open Up and Say Ah. I bought this on cassette. I had the censored cover. I didn't buy it early enough, I guess, or it didn't make it to the stores, uh, you know, by, by where I lived. Uh, this has a lot of small pictures on it of the band doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, I think there's some naked women on here too, or at least in bathing suits. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah, they're covering their their boobs in the in the pool. <laughs> so I remember enjoying this uh, insert as well as a as a kid. Uh, you know all these risque photos. Um, yeah, this is a good album too. Good pop pop metal album. Uh, the production on this is a lot better. Um, and the songs are, are probably just as good. Uh, Love on the Rocks is good. Nothing but a good time, of course. Great. Back to the Rocking Horse and Good Love and Tearing on the Walls is good. Look We Can't Touch is good. Fallen Angel, great riff, great song. Of course, Every Rose Has Its Thorn. One of the best, you know, power ballads of the entire glam metal era. Uh, Mama Don't Dance actually isn't terrible. It's not a terrible cover. It's not the best cover. They kind of put a, put their own poison little spin on it, which is all right. Bad to be good's all right. Uh, a, a good, a good poison album. Uh, I think I like the first one better. I think I like Look With The Cat Dragon better. I like the rawness of that record. I like the kind of punkiness to it, uh, a little bit. And, you know, pop punk, I guess, not really punky, but it has a more raw sound. Even the remix is still pretty raw sounding. All right, uh, June 21st, 86, first studio album from Cinderella. This is uh, Night Songs. This is, a, this is a fantastic album cover. I mean, look at these guys. They look fucking amazing. Uh, you know, people might, some people, you know, complain, you know, oh, this is part of the problem with, with the glam metal era. They look like girls or they're dressed in fucking, you know, the fashion is terrible. I love this fashion. I think it's amazing. I love that these guys were all, you know, decking it out, you know, like, like they were trying to be rock and roll, man. You know I mean? They were trying to do something, maybe not a hundred percent unique, but they were taking it to the next level. You know, they were building upon glam of the seventies, um, you know, and taking Aerosmith, you know, the, the look, the, the uh, Steven Tyler, you know, all the scarves and stuff like that. And, you know, a little bit of eyeliner. And they were just going to the next level, you know, like, we're going to do rouge. We're going to do lipstick, you know. We're going to do it all. Uh, and, yeah, they did it. I mean, they did their hair. They did everything. Uh, and they dressed up like this for every show. Uh, so, yeah, they, they went all out. Um and this is a great record. Uh, Night Songs is great. Shake Me is good. Nobody's Fool. E every song on here is really good. Uh, side One has all the hits, except for Somebody Save Me is on Side Two. Uh, and yeah, and yeah. Uh, one thing about this is uh, Fred Corey, is it? Uh, yeah, Fred Corey on drums. He was supposed to do drums. He didn't do the drums on this record. Uh, it looks like Jody Cortez did, uh, all the drums on this record. I, I guess he just couldn't handle it, but they, they hired him anyway. I mean, they really liked him. I guess he worked on a Chastain record. I think it was a Chastain or a David T. Chastain record and they thought he could do it. But yeah, I guess once they got in the studio, uh, the producer was like, he's not cutting it. So I don't even think he did the, I don't know if he did the drums on the second album either. Uh, but yeah, he does all the live stuff, and he's definitely part of the band. But just an interesting side thing there. And, yeah, Brittany Fox had members that came out of Cinderella as well. Uh, this is a great album. All right, I'm going to uh, stop the video here. 
and I will do a part two to uh, the metal for September 2017, and I'll have a playlist for both. Uh, it'll be a, just one playlist. Um, yeah, I'll just start another video.